something about stars and planets just by sitting in the bath. What makes the water spin? It's partly the spinning of the earth that makes the water go round in circles. When you're on a roundabout, it's you that's going round in circles. But it's the things around you that seem to be moving. Planet Earth is like a giant roundabout spinning in space. Though that seems hard to believe when you're spinning round with it. To us on Earth, it looks as though the sun is moving across the sky. But the whole system is much more complicated. They're spinning all over the place, but the important thing is that everything goes round the same central point. In our solar system, the central point is the sun. Scientists haven't always believed that. The ancient Greeks thought Earth was the center of the universe and everything else went round it in circles. Ptolemy was a less ancient Greek and he found it hard to believe everything his teacher told him. When he watched for long enough, he noticed that some of the planets seemed to loop the loop. Ptolemy was a good scientist, and he knew that if the old theory wasn't good enough, he'd have to come up with a new one. He thought that as they went round in their orbits, some of the planets must move round in smaller circles as well, just like the complicated fairground ride. But he still thought that the Earth was in the middle. For 1,500 years, Ptolemy's theory ruled, till a Polish monk got hold of his book. His name was Nicholas Copernicus, and he came up with a revolutionary idea. He suggested that Earth and all the other planets went round the Sun. So what makes the Sun set? Is it because the Earth goes round the Sun, or because the Earth is spinning? You're looking at Earth from space and the sun is shining from the left. It's night on the dark side of the Earth on the right. The sun is going to set in Australia now. 
the edge of darkness is the sunset moving across the face of the Earth. Here's a different view from space. Real photographs taken from a satellite stuck over Africa. This is what happens during the course of one day. Can you explain why the pictures look like this? Space is enormous, so big it's hard to imagine. The easiest things to see are the nearest, the planets. Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and the smaller ones, Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury, all going round the hot, glaring sun. How big is our solar system, and how do the planets compare in size? They're making a scale model of the solar system. What scale do you think they're using? How big will the model sun be? This is how the sun and the planets compare in size. But how far apart do you think their models should be? These cyclists are each carrying one of the model planets. If they keep to the same scale, how far will each cyclist have to go? First to reach their orbit are the two planets nearest the Sun, Mercury and Venus. Then it's Earth and Mars. Some of the other planets still have a long way to go and it'll be another half an hour before Pluto gets out to its orbit. In 1977, NASA launched a spaceship called Voyager 2. Its mission? To boldly explore the solar system. It took two years to reach Jupiter. And two more years to get to Saturn. Even at more than 30,000 miles an hour, Voyager took 12 years to reach Neptune. Voyager sent back this photo at the speed of light, but it still took four hours to reach Earth. 
out in space, another connection is about to be made. How far away is this astronaut? See if you can work it out. Six zero two one five three one seven four three three eight four four five one two zero six four three five six five three. Over. Hello. 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 What do you mean? Over. These are some of the most powerful telescopes on Earth. This stargazer is a scientific eye in the sky. But stargazing doesn't need to be so complicated. Do you want to find sound? Okay. Well, first, you have to line up this red pointer with the red pointer that's marked on the compass. You hardly need any equipment at all. And you see where this white point is pointing? Look south over there. You can find south from the globe. Now they know which way is south, they can find different stars and planets using the star globe. Oh, where does the star point? Should be over there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. Right there it is, just the north. You don't even need binoculars to look at one object in the night sky. The moon looks different at different times of the month. How can you explain these different shapes?
They're using a tennis ball as their moon. And instead of sunlight, they're using a bike lamp. How can they show the different shapes of the moon? What matters is where the sun, the moon and the earth are. They know the moon goes round the earth once a month, but does that help them explain the different shapes they see? This is how the moon goes round the earth. Why do we always see the same face of the moon? And does it only come out at night? The sun has always fascinated humans. Since ancient times, we've built instruments to find out more about it. Observing the sun isn't easy. The glare is so bright that it's dangerous to look at the sun directly. Like the Earth, the sun spins slowly round. That's why these sunspots seem to move across its face. Without energy from the sun, there'd be no life on Earth. But are there dangers as well from all this energy? These are sun worshippers too, but they know that the best time to look at the sun is when you can't see it at all, during a total eclipse. Then you can see the great solar flares which blast energy millions of miles into space. If you could get far enough away, you'd see that our sun is just one of millions of stars in the universe. Light from the nearest one takes four years to reach us. Deep in space, new stars are born and old ones die. So one day, will our sun set forever? <laughs> <laughs>